Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining me for another restful episode of True Scary Stories to Help You Fall Asleep. Today, we're going to be reading True Crazy X Horror Stories. I hope you enjoy them. So without further ado, lay back, relax, and enjoy these true scary stories. Also, due to the nature of these stories, I want to give a small disclaimer that viewer discretion is advised due to certain triggers that could be in these stories. Anyways, I hope you enjoy. I had a bad situation with my first boyfriend. It actually began in a very weird way, but being as young as I was, I was 14 at the time, I ignored it because, well, someone actually liked me. When I met him, we went to different schools. He went to a private school and I went to public school. After a few months of pretty much just an AIM friendship, he transferred to my school. First red flag. We started quote-unquote dating, if you can even call it that, at 14, and I started to notice him getting way too serious about it. He would talk about being together forever and going to college together. He would even scold me if I got a bad grade because I might not get into college. I realized how overwhelming he was and broke up with him. He was so embarrassed that he didn't want to tell his parents, who he apparently tried to convince every day that we would be together forever. He wanted me to go to his house, out to dinner, etc., and pretend that we were still together. I felt bad for hurting his feelings, so I did it for a little while. It finally ended when I began seeing someone else. I told him that I was dating someone and he freaked out. He started crying and yelling at me and ordering me to give back everything he ever gave me, telling me that he wanted to unalive himself and then he pulled a painting out of his closet that I briefly mentioned liking. He said that he was going to give it to me after our one-year wedding anniversary, and I ruined that. That's when I stopped feeling bad, and I did not speak to him again. It might sound mundane, but it was very scary to 14-year-old me. He ended up in the dryer at my apartment complex in the middle of the night, naked and crying. Yes, you read that correctly. And no, I'm not making this up. I wish I was. I found this guy on OkCupid, and he was a really nice guy if a little strange. Good looking too. We dated for about several months, during which time he slowly revealed that he was hearing things that he couldn't possibly be hearing. His upstairs neighbor or my roommate were talking crap about him, even though I couldn't hear a thing, and he started to get paranoid. This all came to a climax one night when we were at a comedy club with some of my friends. He had been acting strange all night and thought that my friends hated him and were talking crap about him from a couple of feet away. They weren't. I was sitting between them. They had even told me previously that they liked him. He left before the show started and I didn't see him again. Until eight months later, my roommate was getting ready for work one morning. She gets up at around 5.30 a.m. She heard strange noises coming from the laundry room, which shared a wall with the hallway of our apartment. She thought that the loud wailing sounds were from our neighbor's crazy friend and that she'd have to deal with her when she went to the laundry room to get her bike. But when she went in there, she couldn't see anyone and wasn't sure where the sound was coming from. She searched around and was looking under the table across from the washer and dryer when she heard the dryer door being pulled shut. I know, horror movie stuff right there. She was about to open the door, brave lady that she is, but thought better of it and went to wake up sleeping me. I work in mental health for help. I got up and I could hear the crying, so I went out to the laundry room and opened the door. At this point, the person who had previously occupied the dryer was lying face down and naked on the linoleum floor. 
I asked if they were okay, not knowing who it was at that point, and there was no response. I told my roommate to call the police, and while she was on the phone, this person gets up. He was actually wearing mirrored aviator sunglasses and walks past us and into our apartment. He sat on one of our chairs and proceeded to give me a death stare while my roommate was outside speaking with the cops and her work explaining what was happening. He was in our apartment over the course of an hour while the police and later the paramedics checked him out and he did not say one word. The most he did was make a guttural growling noise while he gave whoever was speaking that hate-filled stare. Finally, the paramedics took him to the hospital, and I never saw him again. Some notes. The car we figured out was his was parked outside for about five days, and one day it just disappeared. All he had in his pockets, his clothes were on the floor of the laundry room so I brought them into the apartment, was a boarding pass from around the time that he disappeared. His family was from another state. And car keys. And we could see that in the car were only a bunch of energy drinks and fast food wrappers that implied that he had driven up from other said state, about a one to two day drive, and taken up residence in our dryer. My neighbors and I tried to get in touch with his family, but they were unlisted and the hospital couldn't tell us any information. I wish him well and hope that he's doing better now. My former roommate and neighbors are all Redditors and can verify this story if necessary. I think I was around 18 years old. We'd been dating for about eight months, and I broke up with him because my parents were treating me differently, and I didn't like it. It put too much strain on both my boyfriend and I, and my parents and I's relationship, and I couldn't take it. I broke up with him one night, and about a week later, he showed up at my parents' house wanting to talk to me. My mom answered the door. I didn't want any part of it, so she told him to go away. He got belligerent and eventually left so she called the police. He was pulled over and given a warning. Then they let him be. Dad was at work. Mom took sister somewhere, and I was playing Mario Party 8 on my Wii at home. There was a knock at the back door, and I looked through the glass from the couch, and he was there looking in trying to talk to me. Again, I didn't want any part of it, so I ignored him. He got mad and shouldered the door. The frame cracked. He did it again and the door burst open. I said, what the heck are you doing? And he grabbed me and put me over his shoulder and carried me outside. I figured he was just going to put me in the front seat and leave with me. But then he popped the trunk of his car with the remote and I realized what was going to happen. I twisted a little which surprised him and he dropped me. But then he put me in a headlock where I couldn't breathe and I stopped struggling. He tossed me in the trunk and shut it and drove off. At this point, I was doing everything I could to get out of the trunk. It was a Buick LeSabre, the model which, of course, doesn't have a way to open the trunk from the inside. So I started kicking the back of the seats to get out. I eventually got one open enough to stick my head through to get some air. It was August, and the temperatures outside were riding 95 degrees. So inside the trunk, it was about 110. I got my head out and could finally breathe. He had calmed down a bit and I knew he just wanted to talk to me, so he didn't really freak when I was able to climb into the back seat. When he was putting me in the trunk, the neighbor kids were outside, and they saw what was happening and ran inside to tell their parents. Parents called the police. Police called my mom, and my mom was doing 95 down the highway to get home. Ex-boyfriend drove me an hour and a half away to an old camp he used to go to, and we talked for a while. He then took me to Pizza Hut because I said I was hungry. I remember wondering why no one was concerned that I was waiting for a pizza without shoes or socks on, because no one said anything. I figured my parents hadn't realized what had happened yet. Little did I know, an Amber Alert had already been issued. Anyways, he decided he didn't want to go to jail, so he was going back to his workplace slash place of residence to get his shotgun. 
When he got there, the cops were waiting for him and tried to taser him. They missed, and he jumped in the back of his car and did a backwards U-turn. He started driving through the city at speeds of 60 to 85 miles per hour. If you've never been in a high-speed police pursuit, let me tell you, it's a rush. So much adrenaline. Anyways, he was getting to get on the highway again, but the police had it blocked off with spike strips, so he turned onto a back road that dead-ended. He ended up crashing into his tree. I was in the front seat by this time. The cops swarmed the car, pulled us both out, and since they didn't realize who we were, cuffed us both and put us in separate cop cars. Once everything was situated, they uncuffed me and put me into a police SUV and transported me back to the police station in my city. Parents and sister were there freaked out, found out that I was okay. The whole ordeal lasted around 10 hours. My ex got four years and is now out of jail in a halfway house. My ex and I dated in high school to my freshman year of college. It was more like a friendship to me. We never kissed or did anything physical other than holding hands, and we just hanged out a lot. He was always deeply in love with me, but it was more like an obsession that I didn't reciprocate. One day when he fell asleep while we were watching a movie on his laptop, I had a strange gut feeling to look around on it. On his desktop, there was a folder with my initials on it. I opened it, and there were 400 pictures and videos of me. They were all taken unbeknownst to me. They were all mostly of my legs area, but with clothes on. The pictures were taken everywhere. Public places like at restaurants under the table, in the car, at school, at our houses, etc. All while I had no clue. Like I mentioned earlier, we never did anything physical. We were both virgins. It hit me. He always had his iPod touch on him and it always seemed like he was on it playing games and other stuff. That's how he must have taken these pictures. At the bottom of the folder, there were new videos that were recent at the time. I play them, and somehow the footage came from inside my dorm closet. I always went in there to change right after I took a shower, and he knew my routine. I go into my dorm closet and find the hole where he would have put the camera or iPod. It was 4 a.m. when I found all of this and I guess it hadn't hit me yet because I was so tired and just knocked out. Then I woke up, realizing what I had found and how serious it was. I called my best friend. She came over to my dorm and I showed her. Both of us cried on my bed for a while. I had never felt so violated in my life. Later that day, a group of my closest friends helped me confront him. I told him I found what was on his laptop. He looked at me like a deer in headlights. He started crying, saying, I tried to stop, but I couldn't help myself. He then ran out the door and sat on a bench outside my dorm, crying with his head down for hours. I could see it from my window. After that, he stalked me. At my job, he would be outside when I got out at 10 p.m. and watch me from his car. I had a new boyfriend by then, my first real love and he would be with me to protect me from my ex. He also tried to kill said new boyfriend with a bat when we all went to the same house party. My friends locked me and my new boyfriend in a room so that my ex couldn't get to us. I could hear him trying to break into the room and swinging the bat and breaking stuff in the house while others were holding him back. Then he disappeared at the party and everyone went to look for him. They found him outside on the porch in the fetal position rocking back and forth and crying. A year later, even after losing his virginity to someone else and me being with my new boyfriend for a while, he told some mutual friends that he didn't care about any girl and that he just loved me forever. To this day, everyone I'm close to knows that if I were murdered, they would knew who the prime suspect would be.
I guess a reverse perspective might be nice. I'm probably the crazy ex, although nowhere near as crazy as most of these stories. I was best friends with the girl for three years before dating, and we dated for around a year. She broke up with me somewhere out of the blue, and I insisted that we stay friends because I didn't want to lose her as a girlfriend and as a friend. Well, frankly, I convinced myself that her decision wasn't real and that she'd change her mind the next day. And when she didn't, the next week and so on, I messaged her daily and she would message back. But in hindsight, I probably shouldn't have bothered contacting her. Normally, I'm a rather reserved person, but when I'm drunk, I've been known to do some stupid things. This included showing up at her apartment at two in the morning with pages of drunken breakup poetry that I thought somehow would impress her and pouring my drunken soul open to her. After she kicked me out, like any sane person should do, I began my cold, dark walk home. Despite all the stuff that she must have put up with me post-breakup, she still decided to call me the next morning to say, I don't ever want you to show up my apartment again, but I wanted to make sure that you got home safe. I guess it made me realize that even though it feels like she hurt me beyond repair, it wasn't fair of me to lose control of myself like I had. So I'm not the craziest of exes, and thankfully I've reached some clarity about the whole situation. But I still feel disgusted with myself for acting the way that I did. Oh well. Hopefully she'll forgive that one day. I dated a stripper for about six months. Yeah, I know. My little brother got cancer partway through our relationship, and I was obviously in the hospital with him the majority of the time. She got the flu, and without fail, she called me every day crying that I wasn't able to take care of her. Not the best, but how our relationship ended was quite grand. We adopted a cat for Valentine's Day, and she loved him to death. One day, she is leaving for work and asks me to feed the cat. Of course I will, but I had an unusually long day at work and I was tired, so I decided to lay down on her couch and take a cat nap. Pun fully intended. Well, she got off early, and seeing that I did not feed the cat, I started having a dream that I was being stabbed with a fork. Well, I was. Thirteen times in the back because I didn't feed the cat. I proceeded to get up and run out of the apartment while she was chasing me. She threw her heels at me with deadly accuracy hit me right in the back of the head and stunned me enough that I fell down two flights of stairs, got concussed and sprained both ankles and wrists. The next day she calls me and acts like nothing happened. While I was in class, I was receiving a ton of calls, texts, and voicemails from my then ex. I ignored them and refused to be distracted because it was a midterm review session. He then found my class, threw open the classroom door, and started dragging me by the arm to leave the class. I was absolutely horrified that this scene was occurring in front of about 40 people. I resisted because I really wanted to stay in the class and he was being crazy, irrational, and ridiculous. He finally was able to drag me out, and though the entire class was silent and watching, they did nothing to help. However, when I finally got outside, I told him off. When he finally left, the class was over, and I returned to my own dorm room. It was torn apart. My laptop was folded over its back, and its screen had been stomped on and distorted. My DS was murdered in a like manner. My mirror was cracked down the middle with blood on its broken edges. Finally, in the middle of my room were torn out leaves of my diary with drops of blood on them. Apparently, my ex had broken into my room, read my diary, and went berserk. On the pages he tore out, I had written something like, I'm glad we broke up. I'll find someone better. Yeah, he's definitely a crazy ex. He continued doing other crazy stuff for a while. I called the police on him a few times, but they didn't do anything to help. Eventually, 
He graduated and disappeared. I was engaged to my high school sweetheart, who I pretty much allowed to treat me like dirt for years. After high school, while we were living together, it was apparent that the relationship wasn't going anywhere, and I finally found the courage to end it. I was the one with the job and the money, so I was keeping the apartment and asked her to move out. I think I gave her like two weeks or something, but it was a long time ago. Eventually, she shacked up with some guy, I think, and was out of my hair. Every now and then she would pop in because she left all of her stuff at my place while she was trying to find a new place. I kept hearing stories from everyone of her epic levels of sluttiness and just tried to stay away from it as best as I could. At some point though, out of anger, I went into her jewelry box and took back the engagement ring that I had given her. It was several weeks before she realized it was gone and I'd already sold it by then and told her so when she confronted me in my apartment. She lost her crap. She started demanding that I give it back to her, or at least its value in cash. I told her that's not how engagement rings work and she can leave. She started hitting me and trashing my place. I didn't have to take it. She was smaller than me and I am, was at the time, a black belt. But I just let her take out her anger. She ripped my shirt, slapped me, punched, kicked, bit, everything. Finally, she hit me square in the face and drove my head into the door behind me. On the other side of that door was a calendar hanging on a nail that stuck through the door. Just a small amount, but enough to drive it into the back of my skull, and it really hurt. I just grabbed her hands to stop her from flailing anymore, and directed her over to the door. She could tell that I had lost my patience, so she just stormed out. About an hour later, she shows back up, this time with her mom, and the police. The cop took my statement, took one look at me and asked if I wanted to press charges or if I needed an ambulance. I declined both and then he escorted her and her mom off the property and advised that they take it up with small claims court if they wanted to proceed any further. I was dating a young lady who lived in the Midlands, and she'd come down to London on the weekends and we'd have some fun. Nothing too serious, but it made my weekends enjoyable. Out of the blue, I was asked to move from London to New York by work, and so I told my then casual partner that I'd have to break things off because I was leaving the country. She accepted it and stopped coming down on the weekends. Anyway, fast forward a few months and my move to New York gets canned due to budget cuts. I still had my ex on Facebook, and I started to notice some odd photos popping up. It turned out that she had quit her job and moved to New York when she thought that I was going to move, and was now living there for six months. She reached out to tell me a few days later, and I had to explain that I wasn't there. She was angry. About two years ago, my ex and I went through a really nasty breakup. Lots of crying and nasty words said. It became apparent that she had a lot of emotional problems and really wasn't the person that I thought she was. Lots of anger and lots of lying as I discovered. And to make things stranger, she is the one who dumped me multiple times and was absolutely furious when I finally accepted it and told her that it was time for her to go. I wasn't exactly perfect either, but that's what happens. I had also started a new and healthy relationship at this point, maybe three weeks after the primary breakup, which made her angry to no end. Anyway, she sews up one day to collect some belongings that were still at my place, and she sets me down on the bed and hands me a note telling me to read it out loud. It was a really nasty speech about how I am incapable of love and a terrible person and deserve to die. I refuse, but she's screaming at me, and I was just like, fine, I'll read it if it'll make you go away. So I finish the speech, and she pulls out a loaded gun from her purse, 
and spends the next 15 minutes trying to muster the will to pull the trigger and splatter my brain all over the wall. She says she knows the law. She knows she'll be caught. She knows where she'll go to prison and she's fine with it because I'll be off of this planet. So I spend this time poorly, not to totally freak out, and with tears streaming down my face, telling her that she's not a killer and just needs to go live her life without me. We parted with a hug, and I just learned that she got engaged to a new guy a couple of months ago. One day, I was on the phone with my best friend and told her that I was thinking about leaving my ex because he's too much. Next thing I know, my phone is going off, and he's asking me if I plan on leaving him. I was flabbergasted, and I got freaked out so he could tell. So then he told me that he set up a camera in the living room so he could see if I'm bringing anyone home. He said I could unplug it because he realized that it was irrational, and as long as I promise not to leave him. Fast forward a week later, I noticed my tapestry was moved from behind the bed. When I looked behind there, Sure enough, I saw the cord to another camera. I immediately unplug it, and there goes my phone blowing up with calls and messages. Our relationship only lasted a total of eight months with him. Funny thing is, he was the one cheating, and making tender accounts of us looking for another female to join us without my permission. To this day, I have to block accounts that he makes just to stock my social medias, and I am a really private person now. My ex bought a new phone and lost all of his numbers. He asked me to text him so he can save my number again. As him and I drive home, I text him, hey sexy, what's up? And he responds, hey, can't talk right now. I'll text you back in five. I figure he's messing with me and forgot about it. As soon as we get home, he goes to the bathroom. A moment later, my phone lights up. X, so hey, what's up? Me, um, not much, you. X, super in the mood, want to meet up tonight? Me, why not right now? I'm in the mood too. X, okay, I'll try to make it as soon as possible, cool? Me, yeah. A moment later, he comes out of the bathroom for the following conversation. Him, I'm actually just going to head home, I think. Don't feel too good, is that okay? Me, um, okay. X, oh, but can you text me real quick so I have your number? Me, sure. I send him a text while we stand in the same room. Hi. Him. Crap. I forgot what exactly happened afterwards, but I vaguely remember removing him forcefully from my apartment. A real keeper, that one. She asked me to do a triathlon that her brother was doing, and she was going to watch his son. I've never done one before, but she told me that she really thought that it would be good for me, and would be really proud of me if I did it. So I did. It was a whole weekend camping trip. It rained the whole time. We got there on Friday. I unpacked my setup, cooked, cleaned, and did everything the whole trip. Her brother apparently forgot to register, so it was just me doing the triathlon which was on Sunday. Woke up at 5 a.m., jumped in the coldest water I have ever been in to start, but finished it. It was a mini triathlon, so like, swim half a mile, 13-mile bike ride, and 5K run. But still, that's a lot for me. Anyway, when it ended, I went back to camp. She made me pack everything up, then told me if I couldn't put the tent in the original cardboard box it was in, not just the bag that it was in. When I said she was welcome to do it herself, she told me that her ex had no issue doing it. Mind you, I'm exhausted from, you know, the triathlon, and she just watched me pack everything alone. I put it in the box but ripped it halfway down. 
I didn't give a crap. Drove three hours home and she broke up with me on the car ride home because she just didn't see any potential in me anymore. So yeah, good times. My ex proposed to me publicly at a bar in front of all of our friends. He liked the way it went so well that he proposed to me two more times at two different bars. We were bar hopping in our hometown in front of everyone we know. I said yes three times. So we set a date and I planned this whole wedding. Buy the dress, set up the hall and the catering, flowers, everything. The only jobs that he had were to buy and rent tuxedos for himself and his groomsmen and to find someone to marry us on the date that we had chosen. It was getting really close to our date, and he hadn't done any of the things that he agreed to do. I finally confronted him about it, about a month before this whole event that I had planned, at which time he told me that he was not going to marry me, and that he didn't think that I was going to take his proposals so seriously and actually plan a wedding. Three times, shaking my head, I am happily married to someone else, now. I dated a guy my age in my senior year in high school who began to show signs that he was mentally unstable when upset. I decided to break up with him one day when he picked me up in his car. When I tried to get out of the car, he started driving. I told him to please let me out and he would not. Instead, we ended up at his house. I would like to mention that I didn't call the police because I didn't suspect any danger from him. I just thought that he was being a jerk. I did call a close friend during the drive to let her know where I was and where I was going. Once we arrived, he told me to come inside his house and I refused and was getting my phone to call a cab. I couldn't walk home since I didn't know the area too well. It was absolutely ridiculous to see this guy ball up his fist and make this childlike tantrum face and swear at me that he was going to shout at the top of his lungs if I refused him. Fast forward a week or so, the guy would send me nasty text messages, talking to me like I murdered his family or something. He began to message my Facebook friends asking for me. It was really embarrassing and showed up at my doorstep asking for me. It was horrifying, and I never thought that people like that existed, and that it would ever happen to me. He stopped when I told him that I would call the cops, and the school, as well as his parents. My ex-husband decided to start shooting up during the middle of our marriage while I was pregnant with our son. Then he decided to live on the streets and not work. He went to jail, got clean, did okay for a year, then walked out on me for another woman. Two months go by and he decided that he wanted to work things out. I did not. So he moved into my apartment. I left and gave him the place. He stalked me. One night he broke into my new home and got in bed with me. Now he tells people that I'm the one that screwed him over because I left. Oh, and he burned down my first house, cooking french fries. This girl that I knew asked me out, and we seemed to get along quite well. So I thought. I knew her mom wasn't a fan of me, so we kept it quiet for a while, hoping that maybe her mom would warm up to me. Well, her mom found out and crap hit the fan. I thought maybe my girlfriend would try and calm her down, but boy was I wrong. A couple of days after her mom found out, my girlfriend suddenly sided with her mom, and they both really started abusing me. I noped out, but then they both started stalking me everywhere I went. I couldn't get away from them. Neither of them drove, so they would catch public transport from their side of the city to mine just to abuse me. 
They would wait at places that they knew that I frequented. I thought that they may have gotten tired and over it, but it kept going on for a couple of months. Every time I came across them, all I got was screaming and shouting. Absolute crap from both of them. I finally decided to take action and get a restraining order. They tried a couple of more times, but they eventually gave up. I had very little trust in women and people in general for a long time after that. It was one of the most traumatic things I've been through. Oh, and I don't think we were even dating for three whole weeks before her mom found out. My ex, JJ, was a creep. I was with him for 19 months. This happened around two months into the relationship, just as he was starting to get controlling and it terrified me. It was 2 a.m. and I was in bed. I have super bad insomnia, so I was just listening to YouTube and scrolling through Reddit, not expecting to sleep for at least a couple of hours, when I heard a tap tap on my window. I assumed it was my cat. So I called her name because she always meowed whenever she heard her name. It was silent. And then, tap, tap, tap. I turned my YouTube right down and called my cat again. I hear her meow in the bathroom and panicked. It wasn't her outside my window. Outside my window is the roof of an extension that was built. It slopes up to my window and can be easily climbed onto via my neighbor's woodshed. At that point, I know there was someone out there, but I was too scared to look. I sent JJ a message about it, but he was asleep, and it sent but didn't deliver. The tapping kept happening. Roughly every 20 seconds, there would be a tap, 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 and then silence. It continued for about 45 minutes while I lay in bed just listening. I felt like I was stuck in bed. Like if I came out from under the quilt, then they would somehow get me. After an hour, I realized it stopped completely. I pulled myself from my bed and went to my kitchen where I could see the roof, and I saw a pair of legs dangling over the edge, illuminated by a torch. I decided to give up with my mom, and slept on the sofa with my cat that night. At least whoever's it was wouldn't know where I was. Next thing I know, I'm waking up to my alarm. I go to turn it off and notice that I have Snapchats from JJ, which is odd, but not unheard of. They're all from around 3.30 a.m., so probably just after I fell asleep. I opened the snaps and my stomach dropped. It was a photo of my bedroom window from the outside. Then, one of the legs dangling into my garden. And then one of me, sleeping on the sofa, taken through the kitchen window. I messaged him asking him what the heck he was doing. I got a reply saying he'd come to check on me and chased a guy off from my house. At that point, he had me convinced that he could do no wrong, and if I opposed him, I was scared about what might happen, so I just left it at that. From then on, it happened a couple more times, and every time I just tried to ignore it, but with the joy of hindsight, I know I shouldn't have. I should have told someone or broken up with him, but I was too scared of what he might do. I have a lot of stories about JJ, I might write some more. I've been considering putting it in a book some time now, but I'm not sure. I hope if anyone reads this, then they enjoy it. So for starters, I've been dating this girl for a while now. Her name being Isabel, going on a year very soon, and all is going well in that regard. However, when we first met, she told me about a less than ideal ex-boyfriend that she had a couple of years before she had met me. They still went to the same school, and he ended up going to the same university as us after we graduated high school as well. Apart from that, all three of us went to the same church, meaning there was a lot of opportunity for him to meet us. The creepy encounters with him, Jose being his name, started a little before he graduated high school. After he heard we were dating, he was furious, even going as far as to say that I was abusive on Twitter, but nobody believed him, given his accusation was complete horse crap, 
and he was notorious for doing the same in the past in order to keep Isabel from talking to other guys when they were together. That was just the beginning, though. It started off small at first, seeing him at the mall whenever we would go out on dates, before it was illegal to go outside. After a while, it seemed like a little too much to seem like a coincidence, though. He started showing up to our church, which, although wouldn't ever really be abnormal, he all of a sudden joined the same youth ministry as well. It seemed as if he was trying to get as close to us as possible at all times. There was one instance that I remember very specifically at a grad party everyone was invited to. Everyone was in the backyard, and I remember looking across the patio and just seeing him staring at me and Isabel from the other side. His eyes didn't move, and his breathing was very heavy, as if he was angry, anxious, or both. He didn't try anything that night, though, probably because of the other people there that night. After I left the party and dropped off my girlfriend at her house for the night, I saw a black car following me for a majority of the way home, which I didn't really think much of, and not to sound like that guy or anything, but I wasn't too worried about it either. I'm fairly well built, and I've done martial arts for a little over six years. The next day, that same car was tailing me almost the whole day while I was running errands. Things got a little heated in the afternoon, though. I was sitting in my car outside of a store, waiting for a curbside pickup, when he parked a few spaces down from me, got out of his car, and came up to my window. He started yelling at me, saying that I would never be good enough for Isabel, that she still loved him no matter what I thought, and that he was going to make sure that she and I weren't together. I just tried to ignore him. Starting anything probably would have been a bad move, given that he hadn't even touched me or my car, but I was still a little heated. After heading home, it was already pretty late, so I just played video games for a while till I was tired enough to go to sleep. When I was walking back to my room, I saw him from my window, just standing there on the sidewalk looking right at me. The only reason that I knew it was him was because of the light from one of the street lamps. My parents had also seen him and asked me to go check it out since they aren't the youngest of people and wouldn't be able to do much other than yell at him to go away. But as soon as I walked out, he just got in his car and left. This happened every night for about three days straight. The last night I ever saw him was not like the others, except this time he didn't leave when I went outside. In fact, he started walking closer to me. I didn't notice until he was a lot closer, but he had something in his hand. I couldn't tell what it was, but it looked like a fairly large knife that you would use in the kitchen. Adrenaline kicked in, and I ran back into the house and told my mom to call 911, after which I went back outside. He was just there in the front yard waiting. When I stepped outside, he said, Isabel belongs to me, and I'm going to make that happen, no matter what. He ran at me with a knife, but muscle memory kicked in, and I had him pinned down after that. The cops came shortly after, and I explained the situation to them after which he was arrested with a couple of different charges that I don't really remember. One other thing I do remember, however, was what was inside of his car. When the police came, they also searched his car to see if he had anything else that I should have been worried about. They found a bunch of tape, some rope, another large knife, a handgun, and a camera. I don't know what was going through his head, but I could at least guess from that kit he had in his back seat that he planned on hurting me in some way and recording it. I hate to think what would have happened if he had tried to come into the house while everyone was asleep, but I'm glad that he was arrested for what he did, or planned to do, anyways. I began dating a very cute, super fun, amazing, or so I thought, girl. I'm 29. She is 24. She was so easy to get along with. We had fun. Took awesome road trips. We moved in together. Got engaged. Got married. 
Everything is awesome for about three years. Then, one day, she begins to act really weird and paranoid. Now, a little backstory. One of the things that she told me was that she had no contact with her parents because of her father's abuse. I mean, who would lie about that? She's totally not acting like herself. And finally, I ask her what is going on. She demands to see my email. This was before text messages. Because she knows that I have been conspiring against her with my friends. I'm really confused. So I hand her my laptop and I'm like, babe, I have no secrets. You can read all the emails you want. The next day I come home from work and I find her moments from death. She's not breathing. I call 911. They come and bag her. Get her on life support the whole nine. The doctors tell me that it's likely that she won't survive the night. She OD'd on fentanyl and alcohol. Also widely out of character for her. Amazingly, she doesn't die. And three days later comes out of her coma. Only to tell the doctor that I've been keeping her locked up in the basement. We have no basement. And abusing her. It gets really messy. I find her parents contact info through friends of hers that knew her brother. I call them and they come to my state. Turns out they had hired a private detective to find her and find out what was up in her life, etc. because she disappeared from them after college. There was no abuse. In fact, her parents told me about her diagnosis of borderline personality disorder and she had episodes like this in high school and college where she insisted that her boyfriend was abusing her. Anyway, I immediately filed for divorce. She had lied to me about her entire life. She dragged me through a year-long divorce, constantly lying to judges, etc. She would get lawyers to take her case because she convinced them that I was an abuser. Only after they found out the truth and that we had no money, they would drop her. Then she would get another one, so it took forever. The worst part was, she stole my dog, and I never did get her back. My sister and her husband have been married for a very long time. When they met, they were both married to other people and started cheating on their spouses. In 2008, when my sister came to visit me and my mom, she confessed that she was cheating on my brother-in-law. Before I found out my brother-in-law is slash was an idiot, I had a lot of respect for him. So when my sister told me about the affair, I was furious. I had known my brother-in-law for years. I've always been able to tell my sister what I think. So that day, I certainly told her off. She tried to defend her actions by telling me that she had been a good girl for then 18 years and she deserved to be happy. I was like, what? She and I were standing out in my mom's front yard and my sister is facing me with her arms crossed in front of her, pouting like a child. I gave her so much crap for what she was doing, but it got worse from there. She informed me that she was going to Honduras with the guy to help him do some contracting work. My sister told me that my brother-in-law knew about it. I was stunned. Well, my sister didn't go to Honduras after all. After she went back home, she ended the affair after she confessed it to her husband. He forgave her, saying, I was once where you are now. The guy my sister was messing around with contacted my sister and asked if he could borrow $500 because work had been slow and he needed to make his truck payment. My sister asked her husband to loan the guy the money and he did. My sister charged the guy interest on the loan and gave him a short period of time to repay it. The guy wasn't making any attempt to repay the money, so my sister got nasty. She warned the guy that if he didn't pay the loan off in full with the interest, my sister was going to contact the guy's wife and tell her about the affair. The guy thought that my sister was bluffing, but she wasn't. She sent the woman a letter telling her all about the affair and the loan. The money was repaid very shortly after with interest. To this day, I am still amazed that my brother-in-law is so stupid that he would loan money to a man who cheated on him with his wife. But things got worse. On Thanksgiving weekend, my brother-in-law went out of town to be with his son, 
daughter-in-law and their daughter. Because they didn't live very far from me, I asked my sister to ride down with her husband, drop him off, and come down to my house. I was going to spend the holiday alone and really wanted to see my sister. She said that she just wanted to spend the time by herself, which I thought was odd. She wasn't invited to her husband's son's house because of a falling out that they had years ago and never reconciled. I tried and tried to get her to come and be with me, but she wouldn't. Okay, fine. Shortly after, I called my sister and asked her what she did over the weekend, and she hemmed and hawed about it. Finally, she told me that she had spent it with a guy that she had met. What the heck? She had me on speakerphone and my brother-in-law was in the room. My sister told me that she had confessed what she did to her husband. I was beyond stunned. Next thing I know, my sister and her husband had made an appointment with a psychiatrist. My sister claimed it was to work on their marriage. She told me the doctor told her he wanted to see my sister for her issues and give her prescriptions for them. The doctor also recommended therapy for my sister. My sister refused to get the prescriptions filled, but she did say that she would go into therapy. I have no idea how long she received help. She has a lot of issues though, and always has. These two people are still married and are still together. My sister and I haven't spoken to each other since the spring of 2009, but not because of her infidelity. She's probably still cheating on her husband, but whatever. He's an idiot for staying with her. When I was 23, I was renting my first place when my ex-girlfriend reached out to me. We had dated for X amount of months in high school. It's been over 10 years since high school and I can't remember how long it was. It just went badly because I was a jerk and started talking to another girl. Anyway, my ex said that she was over what had happened when we were teenagers and was willing to give it another shot. So we have a date and then several dates and things are doing really well. A month into our relationship, one night I'm at work on a late shift and she calls me saying that she had gotten into an argument with her mother they had gotten into some sort of domestic about something that she got slapped and needed to cool off at my place. I get home and turns out she was moving in. I'm pretty laid back and wanted to help with the rent anyways, so I'm somewhat okay with it. I mean, I knew I was walking into a snake pit, but I didn't know that it was going to be a viper pit. So we live together for a whopping two months when things take a turn. She starts telling me that she's insecure about me talking to girls. Then that changes to watching adult videos as well, which didn't work because I have control issues. We start fighting a lot, sometimes all night long. She starts cutting herself, saying it was all my fault. She ends up getting tetanus. Late phone calls asking where I'm at work and who I'm with. I work late hours at an ambulance service. Things come to a head one night when Crazy X tries to tell me that looking at adult videos is the same as beating her. She starts screaming at me, bringing up all the cutting and the doctor visits, claiming that it's my fault. I get fed up and tell her to move out. This pushes her off the deep end. She grabs my handgun that I keep for self-defense, tells me that she's going to unalive herself then and there. I call the police. She leaves shortly afterwards, after she throws my leaded gun outside. I think, yay, it's over. But it wasn't. So a few days go by without incident. Crazy X texts me saying that she needs to give me her house key. I tell her no to throw it away. But she drives to my house anyway. Leaves the key and tapes a note to my door saying I'm mentally ill and need help. And she forgives me, blah, blah, blah. I stopped reading after the I need help part, and she keeps texting and texting asking if I read it, even going as far as to blaming her behavior on pregnancy, saying that the baby is mine, but she lost it due to stress. So here I am, years down the road, married, with a wonderful two-year-old hellion, with no regrets of leaving the crazy ex. So, to that crazy ex, let's not meet again.
thank you so much for listening to all of the stories in this video. I hope you enjoyed them. I also hope that you enjoy the extra rain at the end. Get a good night's sleep, everyone. And I'll read to you in the next video. Bye-bye now.